says you have got four oh, bars. Golden. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my brother. That one should be on. It is seven o'clock. Welcome, family. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm not humming now. Praise him. Praise him. Yes. So, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, gathering in his name and praising Woo. him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Let um, us praise him. I just wanted to introduce you to Ada Dahlquist, her and her husband, Ken. Uh, went to our church and served fully and completely in here for um, quite some time and moved about four years ago to Idaho. And so that's who she is. And I've just asked her to pray for us tonight. Thank you. Yes, Amen. Lord. Oh, it's my, my joy to be able to pray. And I'm just uh, coming back and seeing all the faces and seeing what God's done. So Father God, we just, uh, we just praise you tonight and all the things you're doing in Pollock Pines community, all the people that you're drawing to this church. Yes, Lord. And as we receive the word tonight, give us ears to hear and open the hearts to receive. And uh, I am just thankful for what you're doing through this ministry, through this church, and through these faithful servants. And we just uh, bless everyone that's here in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Jesus' name. All right, stand to your feet. Hey, brother. We're going to praise the Lord you, and thank God. Oh, We're gonna, to he's our everlasting yes, God. Yes. We're going to be singing about God a lot tonight. Hey, we're excited about that. Defenders.
church. Wow, you guys are rocking it tonight. Hey, my name is Miles Julian. I'm one of the uh, elders here at uh, Pollock Pines Community Church, and I have the privilege of sharing a few things with you this, uh, this evening by way of announcements. Monday, July 4th, it's a holiday, by the way, we have our fantastic annual community 4th of July celebration right here, starting at 11 a.m. Now, you may want to just come and enjoy some of the food and some of the things for the kids, but you may also want to be involved. So if, if you would like to help us out with that, we're still looking for volunteers. There's a volunteer list right out where we had dinner tonight. So if you just sign up for that, we're asking our volunteers to show up at 1030. One other thing, we also have some, some food contests. So if you are uh, particularly gifted at baking or preserving or making chili, we have some contests for that. So if you're interested in participating in uh, doing that, sign up in one of those lists, would you? Okay, so that's July 4th. Next thing, July 10th, we're having another baptism. Can you believe it? We just had one. <laughs> we just had one uh, in June already. So we're going to have another one. I have a sign-up list for that. If you have... Uh, have uh, acknowledged Jesus as your personal Savior, but you've never been baptized, we'd love to have that opportunity to do that with you. So if you'd sign up on this list, Pastor Paul will be contacting you, and July the 10th, that's coming up real fast. Last thing, July 24th, how about an all-church potluck? Does that sound good? Okay. So July 24th, after our service, we're going to gather out here on the, the lawn area, and we're going to enjoy having a great meals together. We're looking forward to seeing what you will bring. And I know that there's a, there's a listing by, uh, by last name in terms of what we're looking for you, whether it's main dish or dessert or uh, salad, whatever it happens to be. So uh, check, out our, uh, uh, check out our weekly newsletter for that, would you? Hey, let's go back and do some more worship. What do you say? All right, I do want to make one introduction tonight. Um, many of you probably see a new face up here. And this is Emily, and Emily is sharing her gifts from Progress House, and she's an avid soprano, so we're so blessed to have her tonight. So, all right, everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait 
upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign for Our God is so great. How great is our God. And we honor you, Father, in your greatness, in your holiness, in your reverence, in who you are. Praise be to our Father in heaven.
it's time to turn it over to who is preaching tonight who's teaching tonight <laughs> there he is okay <laughs> pastor paul praise him family praise him praise him i want to remind you family that worship doesn't begin at seven o'clock and end at eight. Worship is not in a song. Worship is not something we do just in church. I wanna remind you family, worship is a lifestyle. It's something we do with our life. When we come together and we corporately worship, we're exalting and magnifying the Lord Jesus together in thanksgiving as an act of worship. 
But our lives daily should be representing an awesome and holy God who has called us and set us apart for godly living. Amen? Amen. I want to invite you to join me in the presence of God Almighty. How many of you had a busy week, an action-packed week, kind of a rough week? God is doing amazing stuff on this hilltop in the lives of his people. And I just want to take a moment to zero in on God Almighty. I want us to just open up our hearts to him. And family, if there's any sin to confess, I want to take a moment in the privacy of your own heart to agree with God and confess that sin because my Bible, it it comforts me to know that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I come daily sometimes three or four times a day, and I, I come in agreement that my thoughts were not pure, my reaction. God bless you, Philip. You got my message. Yeah, Ashley told you, if you didn't get here today. <laughs> I love you, Philip. Thanks for being here. So family, let's go to the throne of prayer, the throne of grace, and let's take a, let's take a moment to invite the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate his word to us tonight. Asking the Holy Spirit to transform us that we could leave this place with more of Jesus and less of us. Heavenly Father, as we quiet our hearts and our minds in your presence here tonight, and we transition into yielding ourselves to your teaching, Holy Spirit, we desire to grasp the fullness of your word that you have for us individually. We want to say thank you for meeting us where we're at here tonight and for loving us all the way to where you want us to be in our life, Lord. I'm so grateful, so, so grateful to serve and to love such a good, good God. I share that same desire with my brothers and sisters who come here tonight to experience that great agape love and to walk away tonight knowing a bit more about what your will is for our life. We hunger and we thirst for righteousness. And we desire to be fed in the fullness of your presence. We want to know you more. We want to grow in you more. We want to serve you more. Share you more and love you more. So help us tonight absorb what you have for us in the book of Jude. Where we ask all this in the name of Jesus and God's people said. 
So last week, we finished the book of James, the half-brother of Jesus, and we spent several weeks in the book of James because James offered us practical guidelines for Christian living, and it covered a whole span of wisdom and, and knowledge and, and teaching of how to live daily for Christ. It talked about considering it all joy when we encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of our faith is going to produce endurance. And let that endurance have its perfect result, that we may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And we talked about taming the tongue. And overall, we talked about faith that works. And I do declare to you, church, that out of that book, my faith has actually increased because faith comes from hearing. Hearing the word of God. And those of us who have been delving into the word of God daily, our faith has increased. And we talked about James being the eldest half-brother of Jesus, Jesus being the oldest one. And now I've asked permission of the Holy Spirit to bring an expository teaching on James' brothers, Jude. So we're keeping it all in the family of Jesus. And we're going into the book of Jude which is the most neglected New Testament book in the Bible. It is the least read, the, the, the most overlooked, yet it has the meat of the word, the prevalent knowledge, the, 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 the important things happening today in our church. Tonight, we're just going to break open a portion of the book of Jude that talks about two things. I titled my message, The Defender or the Pretender of the Faith. Because in, in the book of Jude family, it talks about those two. And, and, and there are those who are professors of, of Christ and then there's those who are possessors of Christ. And it's two distinct individuals. It's those who go around and say, yeah, I'm Christian. No, really, I am Christian. And you kind of just lovingly ask them, oh, really, what church do you go to? Oh, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Can I share a, a verse in the Bible? Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't even have a Bible, man. And then you have those possessors, those who Christ possesses as his own, that you can't shut up. <laughs> they tell you not only about their church, but the church is all around them. And the people that, that fellowship at this church and that church, and there's a verse about it. And I just want to tell you that in Matthew 5, 16, it says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So I don't know about all that. You don't go to church and you don't read the Bible and you don't, uh, mm, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Folks, the book of James, or the book of Jude, is so applicable on what's happening today. And tonight, we're barely going to cover three verses. And there's 25 verses in the book of Jude, 
And there's 613 words in the book of Jude. It's like a real short book. And if you want to check, do some Bible trivia and you're in a Bible study, just tell somebody to turn to Jude chapter 3. Just to check people's Bible knowledge. And I'm one that, that as a Christian, I like, to, I like to know where a book is. Um, so when I'm in a Bible study, I know that Malachi is in the New Testament. See, you guys aren't with me, man. Just check in. But tonight, I want to I begin the book of Jude and give you guys just brief history. It was like Peter was preparing Jude for false teachers, and Jude was like right on target with it, saying, now I know what Peter was talking about in 2 Peter chapter 2, the whole chapter, all the way into chapter 3, verse 3. It talks about false teachers And in the next few weeks, depending on what the Holy Spirit does, we're going to be talking about false teachers creeping into the church unnoticed. False teachers creeping into the church unnoticed. But the meat of the word tonight is those of us who are called to be defenders of the faith, to know the truth, and for the truth to set us free, and for us to know that when a false teacher comes into our church and starts talking about heresy, we expose them. We expose them, family. And we compare whatever garbage they're bringing to the holy truth of God's word. And those of us who don't is because we don't know the difference between the truth and a lie. And tonight I'm going to share a little about that. But turn with me to the book of Jude. If you're there, say amen. Amen. I want to start with verse 1, and I'm going to quickly read through 25 verses. So Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, the book we just finished, to those who are the called, beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. May mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt it, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain persons have crept crept in unnoticed for those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation ungodly persons who turn the grace of God, of our God, into licentiousness. Gosh, that gets me every time. Yeah, that. And deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Verse 5. Now, I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, 
subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. And angels who did not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the day, for the for the judgment of the great day, verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same manner, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties. But Michael the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these men revile the things which they do not understand, and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, by these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These men are those who are hidden reefs in your love feast when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly, all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way and all of the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. Now it's going to shift, family. Verse 17, but you, beloved ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ that they were saying to you in the last time there shall be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions Worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. Here it goes again. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy 
of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life and have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. That's pretty deep, huh, family? Very deep. That's pretty deep, the direction that God is going to be taking us. And I know there are some here tonight that are here to learn and become defenders of the most holy faith. There are some of us here who are sleeping, who all have our eyes closed and we're almost in a dream because we really don't care. We're here because we have to be here. We're here because the program tells us to be here. Folks, listen to what the word of God says. You beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Question number one, how do we build ourselves up on our most holy faith? Okay. How do we build ourselves up? Think about it for a minute. Prayer, the word of God, amen. How did Jesus build up the disciples when he spent three years with them, morning, noon, and night, as he started his public ministry. Did he tell them, you will be perfect, you will not make a mistake, you will do what you're told, you will? Or did he sit down with them and share with them the Beatitudes Blessed are those, happy are those. Blessed are you. Oh, Peter, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Excuse me. Sorry about your ear. Oh, Peter. Oh, but you don't understand, Lord. I won't deny you ever. Oh, Peter. Have you ever heard a cock-a-doodle do? <laughs> Family, listen. When Jesus worked with his disciples, he knew their background. And he knew what the end result was going to be. And when he told Peter, Peter, do you love me? Well, yeah. Peter, do you really? Well, yeah. Peter, do you love me, love me? Yes, Lord, you know. What was going on there? Jesus was perfectly aware that Peter had not got to that level of agape love understand the unconditional 
love that God was telling him and asking him. And Peter didn't realize that Jesus was saying, there's going to be a time where you're going to love me with your life. Everything. The great commandment says what? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you see, let me remind you, family, in first century Christianity, they were going through severe persecution. In order to be a Christian like we are today, it costs you something. There were people being martyred all around because of their faith. The Roman government was persecuting anybody that was of the way, truth, and the life. Jesus was the newest thing happening since sliced manna. And people were saying, what? Oh, no, no. He's not the Messiah. He's not God the Son. He's a blah, blah. And they took advantage of creeping in to the fellowships when James, Peter, Jude, John, all of the followers of Christ that were grounded and rooted were standing in the face saying, I don't care what you say. I didn't only hear about Christ. I experienced him. Unfortunately, today, there are people that just keep hearing about Christ. And there's no fruit because there's no root in their life. And at this church... We teach the whole gospel, family. We don't teach the prosperity gospel. We teach the holy gospel. We don't teach the name it and claim it gospel. We teach the God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Our desire at this church family is that if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away and they're not up for grabs anymore. Because again, family, my Bible says do not be deceived. God is not going to be mocked. You're going to reap what you sow. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap destruction, man. But if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. And here in the book of Jude, it is saying in verse 3. Now, keep in mind, family, Jude is talking to the called ones. The be- he's talking to us believers. And he's telling us, well, I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation. I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend somewhat for the faith. No, he said that you contend earnestly, earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Folks, we do a lot of things in earnest. But if we don't do this in earnest, we're in for a world of hurt. 
Because if you're on the fake it till you make it road, you're in trouble. If you're on the, well, my, I, my salvation is based on Peggy, because she's just a wonderful girl, and I mean, I love her. She, uh, you know, Pastor Jim is great, and uh, I'm, I'm just like with his faith. You better not let them hear that. You better not let them hear that because there's one faith, there's one God, there's one truth, and his name is Jesus Christ. And at this church family, everything we do in our children's ministry, in our Awanas, in our youth, in our uh, Sunday adult school, in our preaching and teaching, but over all of that, in our daily lifestyle, we minister truth. We live by truth. And in today, just like back then, there were pretenders instead of defenders, and they were being swallowed up alive by condemnation, cursings, rebuking, and correction, and weeded out of the fellowship. Because the gospel writers wanted nothing to do with heresy, with false teaching, abominations because they were following their Lord and Savior, their Master and King, Jesus Christ our Lord. And when they heard Jesus say, you scribe, Pharisee, hypocrite, you just didn't say that to the religious leaders of that time without Severe consequences. The Bible is still saying those words. If the shoe fits, wear it. I'm not the Holy Spirit and I'm not the one that convicts. But family, in the book of Jude, we are starting this only chapter being reminded of how important it is to be suited and booted and ready for the battle cry. Because every time we live, leave this place, it's on and cracking. Our mission field starts once we walk out that door and sometimes in this very building. There's times we get called out of our pews on Sundays and there's somebody that just walked in that's hurting, that's been misled, that's been mistreated and they're looking for the true church. And I praise God that we have brothers and sisters like you guys that go out there, get a posse, and just baptize them in love. Get them connected. Tell them about all of our services. At the same time, you're in the kitchen feeding them, giving them coffee. Do you need a ride? Can I buy you groceries? Defending what God Almighty is teaching us in this church. This is a rhetorical question. That means don't answer it. <laughs> On a scale from one to 10, how good of a defender of what you say you believe in? Your faith in God. How strong or how weak is it? Folks, I had to examine myself. 
and Sherris and I, my beloved wife, we have Q and A sometimes. Paul, how would you lead someone to Christ? What do you tell them when they start asking you questions? How do you explain to them what the Bible says? What verse do you share with them? It's getting really quiet in here. Folks, we know every social media app. We know how to get anywhere on the internet. But when you ask somebody to take you to a verse, series, where is that verse that says, uh, oh, folks, tonight the message is challenging each and every one of us to delve deeper as a defender and not become a pretender. The weeks to come, fasten your seatbelt, because the word is going to be blasting us on unnoticed false teachers coming in. You guys are going to be blown away at scripture interpreting scripture. But tonight, I'm just going to make it real simple. I'm going to help you get dressed tonight. I'm going to have, I'm just going to direct you guys in how to get clothed, suited and booted. So turn with me to the book of Ephesians. And here's your application. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And you guys, let's start challenging each other to grow. Let's start challenging each other to memorize just six name or seven names in the New Testament. Not the books. Don't, don't trip. <laughs> just the names like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. What's after John? Acts. What's after Acts. What's after Romans? Corinthians, and then that, that's eight right there. Boom. And then the following week hit another seven. And then the following week hit another seven. How many books are in the New Testament? Okay, we, 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 we're going to do homework. We're going to do some homework. So there's 27 books in the New Testament. And in order to rapidly grow, especially if you're in, in, in Miles' class, Miles, our elder boy, he, he's in John, but he'll go all through the New Testament cross-referencing. You got to follow with that. Amen? And it's good to know your Bible. And if it's just to you, oh, that's just so elementary, well, then memorize the 39 books in the old. <laughs> Folks, I'm just challenging you to become a defender. And if you don't even know where the books of the Bible are, you're a pretender. I'm just kidding. Everybody's like, what? Wow. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Here's your application, you guys, and I want every single person in here to memorize this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. That's starting to be a good defender, huh? Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Recognize where the power is coming from. It's not your arrogance, it's not your power nor your might, but the Spirit of the Lord. Verse 11, put on just a piece of the armor, just one or two pieces. Oh, my bad. Put on the full armor of God. 
why in the world would I want to do that? Oh, but wait, there's more. That you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. That's what Jude's talking about. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, because of that, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, in addition to all taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, people generally stop right there and miss the nugget in the next verse. They just stop right there. They're looking for the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of Elisha, they're like, have their shoes. Here's where they would find it in verse 18. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for yourself. No, it doesn't say that, does it? Alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known what the boldness of the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. How many of y'all got to work out today? How many of y'all yoked up? How many of you guys <laughs> bumped up your spiritual muscles? Let me see it, Isaiah. Let me see that. There you go, brother. There you go. Folks, we have to do it. There's no other way to become strong defenders of the faith. There's no compromise, no half steps. Some people leave church and they go get high. Some people leave church and go get drunk and go have sexual affairs with other people. Oh, wait a minute, I better stop. That's just too convicting. Don't speak that, Paul. Oh, I'm gonna speak it because I just finished reading. With boldness, with boldness speak the truth. But let me tell you what else I'm gonna speak boldly is you people being about the business of Christ, walking like warriors, helping your neighbor, serving your neighbor, being out there, being soldiers, royal ambassadors. I'm going to speak boldly about you warriors because you are faith-walking people. You guys don't talk about it. You be about it. And that pleases the Father. When we at this church hear the good news of somebody coming up and say, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for so long for somebody to help me take all my stuff out of storage and just 
deliver it over there. I've been waiting for it. Guess what? Last week, one of the church members helped me. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh, Paul, I, I needed $20 to get down to, to Sacramento because my dad just died and the church helped me and filled my tank. I'm speaking about you, church. People helping people, people loving people, people taking the time like I'm going to do to go have breakfast with the lovely couple at CT's and just love on them. Having a cup of coffee with somebody who just wants to talk. Oh my gosh, Paul, you must have all the time in the world because I don't have time to be doing all that. Well, you better make time. We got so much loving at Sly Park over Tuesday. People bringing their boats, children coming, parents coming, kids all over the water. And I mean, it was great. Okay, I'll shut up. I could go on and on when it comes to bragging about you, family. You guys are doing awesome. And I'm asking the Lord to shower buckets of blessings on you because this church is not in the spiritual health it is today because we have a bunch of lazy Christians in this church. We have hyperactive, super spiritual, spirit-filled men and women of God in this church that are about the kingdom business. And like Miles said about baptism, uh, July 10th, I'm going to be teaching at 9 a.m. all about baptism, all the who, what, why, when, where, how, all that at the 9 o'clock hour. And the application is at 10 a.m. We're coming down here. And we're going to dunk them in Jesus, buried with him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We're going to celebrate, right, Pastor Jim? So those of you who have not signed up on the list, do not leave this place. But I, if you're a female, I want you guys to talk to Peggy, Sherris, Janelle, somebody. Just kind of get, get prepared. And if you're a male, talk to Pastor Jim, any of our elders, me, or a brother, and let's get prepared to be biblically water baptized for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. Yes, Debbie. Pastor Paul, for you to tell us how you get dressed in the full armor and when you do that, yeah, so you guys, um, you could sit down because we're going to be here till midnight. <laughs> um, D Debbie, that's a good question, and we're going we're gonna to go over that next Friday. We're going to go over the specificity, the details, the step-by-step, -step, the time elements. I'm telling you, 25 verses might go on for 25 weeks. I'm not sure yet. It's not my job. I'm just going to do what I'm told. Okay, but right now, I'm going to ask you guys to join us. We have a couple of worship songs, so let's get our worship on. Thank you. I love you, church. Give it up for Jesus. No. 
Hallelujah. Family, I have an announcement before you leave. We picked up about 700 loaves of bread, French bread, uh, Europe bread, Pollock Pine bread from Safeway. Do us all a big favor. How many of you like almond milk? Almond milk. I want you each to take four gallons of it, okay? We have butter, we have bread, we have so much stuff. And seriously, 
Don't like, oh my gosh, but I'm going to leave some for those who really need it. You need it. You need it. So empty all the shelves. Take some for yourself. Take some for the neighbors down the street. Mail some to another state, to your family. Just take it. All of it. Amen. God okay. bless you guys. Before we'll you all leave, I'd like to make a personal invitation to all of you to join us Monday, all of you over there, if you'd like to join us Monday and be transformed back to a happier time of the late 50s, early 60s with oldies but goodies and a tribute to the ventures, please come and join the elderly brothers at the uh, park over here on Monday, or probably around a quarter to one. Fourth of July, you guys need to be here, 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm feeling great, man.